that was. That should have been a foul. This is too intimidating. I love the fact that that right now, without if nobody talked, all you could hear was the tinking of the hammer. You could be in the 11th century. Um, this really is a timeless art Good. that uh, that anybody can participate in. See, you're talking to the stone now too. Yeah. <laughs> So it's very fitting. We've got the church, which is celebrating its 175th birthday next year. The Frontenac Heritage Foundation is celebrating its 45th birthday. And so it just seemed like a great idea. Come together in a, one of the old, if not the oldest heritage district in the province of Ontario to rebuild these special walls. Show me where you, section is so, uh, as has already been said, welcome uh, to, to everybody in the purple shirts for all the all the great work that you're doing over this weekend. Uh, it's uh, it's astounding to see in person, and uh, it's a legacy that so many people in our community are going to be able to enjoy. Um, so you can see behind me. Um, you can see the camaraderie that's happening. Uh, people are working together, uh, having never done it before, working alongside an experienced person, and it, and it really works. Plus, it's a lot of fun. The weather's great. We have this fantastic project, which is a, an 1840s wall um, uh, made out of Kingston limestone. Uh, it's been rebuilt a few times. Uh, this time, it's going to last. Drystone Canada has an annual festival where we'd like to bring in uh, wallers from around the province uh, in, in Canada and the United States. What we're doing is build, rebuilding this wall here at St. Mark's Church. And we're doing this with a mixture of experienced wallers who could either be professional or uh, just amateur, such as myself. And as well, we're running a workshop for students, uh, which who have signed up and paid for a class on how to build a basic dry stone wall. Uh, we, we do it to promote dry stone in Canada, because this is what we do for a living. And uh, we're just a bunch of crazy guys that, We'll get together once a year and do something for nothing, just to promote the, the craft, basically. All right, perfect. It's kind of a vacation, working vacation, learning, working, having fun, all at the same time. And I like to build things that, that will last, hopefully, far beyond me. I, I love that every single stone is uh, different. You know, it's different from bricks or blocks or, or shingles. And uh, I love that um, they're not made in a factory. Um, you know, it's, it's challenging, but it's super satisfying when you get a bunch of stones to do what you hope they would do. Uh, dry stone yeah. walling is just, you know, you need just one, maybe one tool or no tools. It's just working in nature, working outside, and uh, building, trying to build something beautiful. There is something um, calming about just the clink of the stone against each other, the odd sound of a chisel, Maybe a little discussion if you're talking to one ter person or another, but really it is a quiet work and um, without a lot of uh, interference and it does sort of center you and feel you, you're back with the nature. I'm an amateur, I haven't been certified yet, but I'm starting to understand the processes of both calming down, letting the rock do the work for you. The best rock is right at your feet, believe it or not. I love this for that. I love the zen of it. There's a philosophy that a lot of wallers have is that you just have to believe the stone into existence. That, that in that pile there is the stone you're looking for because you, it, it develops a really positive attitude to everything. You say, I believe the stone I, I need to solve this problem is here somewhere. So let's see if, we, if that theory is correct. 
There it is. The tapers. The tapers go down. It's just a little, just a tiny bit too long. Take off the back. There it is. You should come over here and see it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I have this theory that people should be like a dry stone wall. And by that I mean they should be strong, they should be flexible, and they should be connected. That's way easier. <laughs> this is where the students are working. You might be able to see some of the string lines. There's uh, two sets of strings um, just above the height of the wall. Those strings are used as guides to find a way to make sure that you're getting the right corner or batter, which I'll explain in a second, of the wall. The wall has to have sort of a lean in on either side and that's called using a batter frame which we have mounted at the far ends of the wall. So this batter frame is designed to ensure that the wall is built according to what we want it to be as we build up and we don't want it plumb. Having a plumb wall with stone with no mortar is difficult and it um, just makes it a lot, a lot more difficult to make up that kind of wall. So the advantage of the, the dry stone is that you, uh, you have expansion joints in the wall. You know on the, like on a sidewalk where they cut the sidewalk to cut the concrete and they have those joints in there? Those are called expansion joints. So when the frost starts heaving on that concrete, the whole thing doesn't all bust up. It'll just move a little bit. Where the dry stone wall, these are all expansion joints. So when when frost lifts the wall up, um, it it allows it to move. But when it lets it go back down, it allows it to go back down. So actual fact that the, over time when the wall gets moved, it'll actually tighten up even more. The main thing is like the you know its ability to move around. It's kind of like a bicycle chain, like it's linked together, but because there's no mortar or cement just gluing everything together, you know, it's it's free to move around, kind of like chain mail, you know. Uh, so the harding fills the uh, voids between the two faces of the wall, um, but it's also laid in a way to help tie it together, so you want, you want flat overlapping pieces. You don't want to throw in any wedge shape at, a, at an angle like this. So as the wall comes and goes with the frost, you don't want a wedge shape to be able to drop down in and over the decades, every winter, uh, force the wall apart. So it helps, uh, you know, helps tie the wall together and uh, fills the void so that you can build the next layer of stone. It's my purpose to just uh, turn kids on to uh, dry stone walling for future. You know, Legos, sometimes they fit Two, uh, there's, there, it's very boxy, and, and you don't have the, the imagination. Perhaps uh, your imagination is not unleashed. Whereas if you've just got uh, irregular rocks, you really have to figure out how and why they're going to fit together. And it's a lot of fun. It's all decision making. It's, a, it's creativity, raw creativity. I think today's society is very short sighted as far as. Uh, what, what they, the impact that they leave, um, you know, if, if something is going to last their generation, that's totally fine with them, or even half the generation. Um, but I think taking pride in building something that will last generations is, uh, it's a pretty neat thing to do, you know. What you see here is the original wall, and because it deteriorated so badly, there was so much overgrowth and you can see the roots got underneath the wall and over time it wasn't maintained and if it was properly built you wouldn't need to maintain it so that's why you have this and as I said before this wall goes all the way around the back of the church and over to the other side so that's amazing how they managed to do that and all this overgrowth makes it hard to get at That's a good one, Lee. Yeah, I think it's really great. And you have to work with other people on this. Like, even though you kind of get lost in your own little space, you do have to work with other people in order to tie in your ends and have that communication across the wall. And 
you know, be patient with people who are going at a slower pace and then be patient with people who want you to go at a faster pace. Kind of balance that out as recognizing it's more of a community project than it is like a construction project. We got it done, now it's just a clean up. So, all in all, a good day's work. <laughs> no one lost a finger, so it's a great day. Where's Phil? I got everybody but Phil. Oh well, that's okay. There he is. <laughs> Look at that stance. That's like I like the picture. Stretching his back. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Don't mind, you can smell the sea The pillars standing tall and strong Shaped by Michael McCarty In the morning to the wall With our coffee and our tea The hammer strike and chisel steals The drummer driving me Break those stones of